Jesus, the Triumphant, Part 6, Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, Day 182, John chapter 12, verse 23, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my Father honor. Holy Father God, we are weak and feeble, but we know that you are strong and mighty. And so we pray that you would give us your grace and strength to preach your holy word and to hear your holy word and to do it. For some, Lord, this is a hard saying, uh, but a good saying. And I pray that you grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to live it out as you want us to. We pray for those who are listening now who have never trusted you as Savior, open their blinded eyes unstop their deaf ears and help them to see clearly and to hear clearly tonight so that they can be saved. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Henry Morris said the man whose priorities are right has such an attitude of love for the things of God that it makes all interest in the affairs of this life appear by comparison as hatred, and that is so true. Beloved, as he continues with what is nearly his last teaching in the temple, Jesus expands the principle that we looked at on last night beyond himself to include his followers as well as I touched on last night. Using the metaphor of a seed, a plant, Jesus told the people that the hour had come for him to die. Yet by that death, he would be glorified and great fruit would come from his death. Yea, his redemptive work. Now he explains that the same applies to those who follow him, those who trust him as Savior. When he said, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. And I'm going to say something here tonight that's going to make some folk angry. But we have many in the church caught up in the so-called prosperity fake gospel. They have lost their lives and they are losing their lives. because they're not really following Jesus. And instead of constantly listening to false prophets tell you to plant a seed here and there, 
the seed in this passage that Jesus wants you to plant is yourself. Amen, somebody. Amen. He wants you to die to self. He wants you to literally, if you will, hide behind the cross. He wants you to die to self so that you can become fruitful. The reason why, and I say this without any fear of successful contradiction, the reason why most Christians are not fruitful today is because they're not dead yet. You've got to die. Jesus died and look at his fruit. Jesus wants you to follow him in death. He's talking to those who follow him. He wants you to follow him in death. He wants you to die to self. And those of you who have an ear to hear, hear it. Uh, those of you, if it's going over your head, there ain't nothing you can do about it. I can't help you. But you know if God is speaking to you tonight. You love your life too much. And uh, you're losing your life. And the seed that God wants you to plant is not your little five dollars. Not your little ten dollars. Not your little fifty-eight dollars that some false prophet has concocted in his mind telling you a lie that it came from God. A certain number of dollars came from God and a certain number of people are supposed to give it. And then your business will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. You'll have everything you want in the ministry. You'll get a new car by next Saturday and all this bull. It's foolishness. And you need to stop following it. It's a bunch of garbage. You want to plant a seed? Plant yourself. Amen, somebody. Amen. That's what we do with seeds, by the way. We plant seeds so that the seed can die. But the purpose of the seed dying is to bring forth much fruit. Amen, somebody. When Jesus speaks of hating our life, he does not mean that we should um, disregard it and not take care of it and not appreciate it. What he does mean is that we should not value our lives above God and the things of God. Jesus Christ himself, his salvation that he died for his uh, the redemption that he has provided for us and the the commandment the great commandment and the great commission that he called us and commanded us to keep amen somebody uh, in, in fact he went as far uh, as this to say that your love for your family members compared to your love for me, ought to be hatred. Just as Jesus did not value his life above God's plan for the redemption of human beings and willingly laid his life down on the cross, we should not value our life on this earth more than anything that God wants us to do for his glory, his praise, and his honor. Can somebody say amen? You want to plant something? Plant yourself. In the church, we often praise God for the fact that Jesus gave his life for us. And we should. But we forget that one day we may be asked by God to give up our lives for him. How about that? Amen, somebody. Many people in the early church were given the choice to deny Christ or die. And thousands chose to lovingly and willingly be stoned, be crucified upside down, 
burned at the stake or thrown into an arena with hungry animals rather than deny their blessed Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to shout amen. <clears throat> uh, but if we uh, get in a traffic jam on our way to church, we turn around and say, oh well, I'm going home and I'll just catch them on the internet, on the internets. Any little thing can stop us. A friend can come by at 8 o'clock. You determine you got your clothes laid out to go to church, to serve God, to be an usher, and do this and do that. And a friend can stop by at 8.30 in the morning and say, I just thought I'd come by and take you to uh, for a little brunch or something this morning. That's, you know, I just had that in my mind. And there you go. Any little thing will stop us from serving God today. By their actions, however, we see that they loved God more than they loved their own lives in this world. And I'm here to tell you, beloved, believe it or not, there are some Christians in this world who love Jesus so much that they will die for Jesus. Not many. I mean, willingly, cheerfully joyfully gladly yes they will have a little trepidation about death let's not trip but they will die for Jesus uh, there's some folks in this world who will do it even today <laughs> uh, you give you get you ask them a question you deny Christ or die they say hey, that's easy start doing whatever you're gonna do but just make it quick don't be trying to cut my head. Just chop it off. One slice. One whack, rather. Don't be chewing on my neck. Just go ahead and do what you're going to do. You're not carving a turkey. Just bam, be, be through with it. Christians today, some who have died and many who are facing the threat of death because of Islamic terrorists who give them the choice to embrace Islam or die, deny Christ or die, have also shown us what it means to love God more than we love our lives. How about a dear Christian friend sitting on your padded pew in the air condition? When I mentioned the other day while we were, uh, the other, the last song we sung, and I said, thank God for AC. Some of y'all, y'all, y'all said, yeah, that's right. Thank God for air condition. No, I'm not talking about thank God for air condition. Thank God for Andre Crouch, who wrote that beautiful song. I don't know why Jesus loved me. Our theme song this year. See, some of you, oh, okay. Now I see what you're saying. Y'all said, yeah, thank God for air condition. It'd be so hot in here without that air condition. I heard it's gonna be ninety degrees tomorrow. Well, I just won't come tomorrow if you don't have no, if you don't have air. Are you struggling with that? Some of you thought I was struggling with air conditioning. We're not struggling with air conditioning. We were thanking God for Andre Crouch in that beautiful song. I don't know why Jesus loved me. Be that as it may, most people would give up anything to continue living. People have given up money, material possessions, their bodies, their dignity, and their consciences just to stay alive. Some don't care if a little child dies. No compassion whatsoever so that they can get their body parts. The thing they don't realize is that eventually they die anyway even with the, the new liver or the new heart you're still going to die Jesus said he that loveth his life shall lose it do you love your life so much do you love your life too much you will lose it are you doing everything you can to stay alive down here 
you're still going to lose it. People who love their own existence more than they love God will lose their life in more ways than one, not only physically, but uh, you're not going to be able to enjoy the life down here anyway. Uh, I, news flash for you. If you don't love God, if you don't trust God, if you don't fear God, if you don't obey God, if you're not faithful to God, you can't enjoy your life anyway. You can't even enjoy your new car. You can't even enjoy the fact that you can go to a vacation, uh, go, go on a vacation uh, out in the Bahamas somewhere. You can't even enjoy it. If you don't love God, if you don't trust God, if you don't fear God, if you don't respect God, if you don't obey God, if you don't, if you're not faithful to God, beloved, you can't even enjoy the life you have. And you certainly cannot enjoy it without him. If you don't even know him, it is impossible. You say, what about eternity? after they die. Their eternity will be what the Bible calls the second death, an existence of torment, suffering, and pain in the lake of fire. If you love your life, you lose in the end. On the other hand, Jesus says, he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. You say, preacher, what is he talking about? Let me help you. If you're not talking along these lines to your brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, God has blessed me tremendously. And uh, God has especially blessed me over the past several years. And uh, God has blessed me with this. And my family is intact and this. And we're healthy and this. But you know what? There's still something deep down on the inside. I feel homesick for heaven. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen lights. Y'all don't hear me. If you're not saying something along those lines, I'm talking to folk who've been saved a while. God has blessed you. It's not You don't hate life because things are not going well. You just, there's something on the inside of you says that uh, you don't belong here. You're just visiting. You're just passing through. You're headed to, to a, another place called heaven. And you really, like Paul, can't wait to get there. Amen, somebody. But you, 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 you'll, you'll stay here to try to help somebody else get there. Beloved, notice the words in this world. I don't know about you, but with the terrorism, the insane violence, the hatred, the crime, the pain, the suffering, the disease, and the death we see all around us, young men from prominent families turning girls upside down who are uh, not even aware of what's going on behind a trash bin and raping them and leaving them there? You want to live in a world like that? There's something wrong. And by the way, all of that wickedness that, that because you're behind a gated community and uh, you are seen as prominent and you have two cars in the garage and uh, a big fine house on pork chop here well let me just tell you about a lady yesterday uh, who led by the devil of the two days ago killed her 21 year old daughter shot her she was calling everybody to the house for a family meeting Everybody thought uh, she was calling everybody to see how, how things are going to work out regarding a, a possible divorce. And so everybody came over. One daughter came. The other daughter came. Uh, the husband and father was on his way. This beautiful young mother, beautiful young daughters, when they got to the house, she pulled out a gun 
shot the oldest daughter twice and made sure she was dead, 21 years old, shot the youngest daughter, 17 years old, made sure she was dead, and uh, then she held the gun in her hand, so when the police came and they told her to drop it, she wouldn't do it, and she started uh, acting like she was going to pull it, police shot her and killed her dead. You say, well, why didn't she kill the husband? The news reporters tell us that she didn't kill the husband because she wanted to keep on killing him because he loved his children. That's, that's demonic thinking. That's beyond evil. This is in a nice, beautiful neighborhood outside of one of the most prominent cities, rich cities in this country. You, you still want to live here? <laughs> There's something wrong with you if you are a child of God and you love this life more than you love God and the life to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you. Thank you, Danae. But with the terrorism, the violence, the crime, the pain, the suffering, the disease, and the death we see all around us, life in this world isn't hitting on too much for me. But Jesus says, if you love him more than you love your life in this world, you won't lose your life. You'll keep it unto life eternal. Amen, somebody. What is life eternal? Life eternal is everlasting life with God and with Jesus and the angels and other saints in heaven forever and ever. Let me tell you just a little bit about it. The highest pleasure you have ever enjoyed in this life. Multiply it a trillion times over and over and uh, understand at the same time it is forever and forever. Uh, that's what heaven is going to be like. You need to be there. Amen somebody. Please notice with me the words of this poem by David Edwin Hall. A lesson God conveys on fruit is centered in the seed. Unless it dies, it won't take root, producing what we need. It's not about self-preservation or self-exalting strife. The paradox of our salvation is death that brings forth life. How perfect is this paradox of life thus sacrificed? How vividly the seed unlocks the treasures found in Christ. Yet listen as he now extends that paradox to us, since our own fruitfulness depends on sacrificial trust. Lord, by this paradox so true, your lesson now is plain. Unless we give our hearts to you, our life is lived in vain. The second death or life eternal, a life lived in vain or a life that never dies, the choice is yours. Dear friend, if you choose eternal life through Jesus Christ, allow me to show you the way. First, dear friend, understand with me that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please understand with me that because of your sins, you deserve punishment in hell, as I mentioned earlier. For the Bible says in Romans 6.23, The wages of sin is death. This includes physical death and spiritual death in a place called hell or the lake of fire. That is bad news, my dear friend. But I have some good news for you that 
Jesus Christ commanded me to tell you. And I'm glad to do so. In John 3.16, this is a message that Jesus Christ delivered. And nobody, nobody preached the gospel better than Jesus Christ. He said these words himself. This is your ticket. It's the John 3.16 ticket. Take it so that you can go to heaven and be with God and Jesus forever. For God so loved the world, that includes you, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that is perish in hell, but have everlasting life where? In heaven. Free. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins. That he shed his blood on the cross for your sins. Was buried and rose again. And then pray and ask him to save your soul. For he says in Romans 10, 13. Uh, very clearly. And I want you to understand this verse. Because this is what helped me to get over the hump. And get saved. December the 19th, 1979, when I was a young man at the age of 19, on my way to a devil's hell. But God spared my life so that I can hear these words. That if thou, that if you, shalt confess with thy mouth, your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How about that? Very simple. You don't have to join the church to be saved. You don't have to get baptized to be saved. You don't have to do good works to be saved. Those things are great. They're wonderful. You will do them after you are saved. But you don't have to do any of those things to be saved. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will save you. And then he'll clean you up and help you do all of those other things. Are you willing to get saved tonight? Are you willing to believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, and rose again? Pray with me right now, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. And he will save you just now. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I deserve a sinner's hell. Please have mercy and grace upon me, and for Jesus Christ's sake, forgive me of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent of my sins. And to start living for you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen.